welcome, welcome. Thank you for joining me, the old grumpy prosperity team and the prosperous divas, for this special presentation of Grow Your Mind and Money. We are interviewing Vasavi Kumar, acclaimed speaker, coach, licensed therapist, and entrepreneur. Vasavi has experienced the other side of the mountain, the valley, and the mountaintop, and has used those challenges to empower herself and others to bring out their best, stay the course, and take the action to fulfill their dreams. Vasavi's willingness to share her heart, not just her knowledge to make a difference, has her be a champion for humanity. Before we continue, it is time to see what prospering thought Mr. Ronnie has for us today. Mr. Ronnie. Well, thank you, Prosperous Diva Nikki. And <laughs> wow, wow. Strength of spirit. I am mentally, physically, and spiritually strong because I am created in the image and likeness of God. I am strengthened through my faith. A oneness of spirit encompasses every aspect of myself and manifests as mental, physical, and spiritual strength when I lean into my faith and allow it to support me. I can handle anything through spiritual strength. I have the capacity to manage and guide my own thoughts and behaviors to accomplish my goals. I may have moments when I feel weak, and that's okay because I know that the strength of spirit is not only the essence of God, but also the essence of who I am. I have the capacity to deal with whatever stressful situations I face. I am mental physically, and spiritually strong. Lord God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power and of love and of divine discipline. What I'm present to about myself and grow on my mind when it comes to the theme strength of spirit is how not present I am to my strength of spirit. And I'm only really truly present to that from the generosity of when other people acknowledge who I'm being. Because in the moment, I'm just out there. And when they share, that's when it touches me and I become present. So, uh, oh, hmm. Divine discipline. Thank you, thank you, thank you for divine discipline. Now, it is time for our special interview with Vasadi Kumar, Empress Nakia. Take care. Right. Thank you, Ronnie V. In this part of the interview, we learn about a challenge Vasadi faced in having her dreams filled, fulfilled a challenge that knocked the wind out of her system. Somehow, some way, she kept going and turned that challenge from seeming defeat to victory. Thank you, Vasavi, for being on the show tonight. Thank you so much for having me tonight on this beautiful Sunday. Absolutely. All right, lady, let's jump right into it. So, Vasavi, please share an instant or time in your life that knocked the wind out of your sails. And all right, well, um, I'm going to share two, but they're all under the same umbrella. So, I've been in business since 2010. All right, and doing great. Got everything going. Got a lot of media coverage. Been on VH1 Basketball Wise. I have an Ivy League education. I'm making six figures. Working with a lot of people. A lot of people know who I am, both offline and on the internet. 
right? Everything's looking really good. I got the black BMW. I'm, I'm paying, you know, I, I just, I, I'm going on vacation, living this life, right? Yeah. Um, but, but there's a but. I also have a growing cocaine addiction. Mm. And while I'm serving all these people, telling people, coaching people on how to live their lives, love yourself, self-care, mm. yeah. I have an addiction. Uh, here I am, completely disconnected from God, completely disconnected from myself, and I'm using cocaine and alcohol and pills to deal with my problems. Now, this um, all came to surface in 2017. Um, so I checked myself back into rehab. No, I checked myself for the first time into rehab in October of 2017. So that was kind of when I would say everything hit the fan because at that point I completely burned my life to the ground, right? Everything that I'd worked really hard for um, got destroyed because the addiction got the best of me. Right. Wow. Um, we, we like to think that we're in control, but we're not. So that's something I had to learn the hard way. And, <laughs> yeah. um, th- and, um, I, I would like to say that that was the end of it. Right. Like I went to rehab, got sober, look at me now. No, that's not what happened. Mm. I got out of rehab. I had about seven months sobriety under my belt. I decided during that time to like get back together with this toxic ex-boyfriend that, really kind of brought about all these behaviors. I allowed that toxicity in my life. And I want to make that very clear because a lot of times when stuff happens in our life, we always look to see who can we blame. And I, I blamed him. I blamed him really good. Like it was all his fault that my life burned to the ground. Right. And what I had to learn hard and fast was that what I had to learn hard and fast was that I allowed that into my life. I allowed it every, every time I wanted to say no, I said, yes. Every time I knew I should walk away, I stayed, I allowed it. Um, and so cut to, cut to present moment, you know, everything's going great. This is now 2018, get this really cool job in Austin. I'm the co-host of our morning show. I started drinking because I don't know how to handle all this now too much. So I, 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 I put down the drugs. I picked up the alcohol and doing that now all like Friday, Saturday, eventually I got let go from the job six months later. This was last March. Okay. This past March, six months ago, I got let go. Wow. And I, um, I checked myself back into rehab in March and um, I'm now six months sober by the grace of God. And it's so different this time because I willingly turned myself over and my life and my will over to my higher power. I said, I am never going to go through this again. What do I need to do differently? And so willing to do the work inside out is where I'm at one day at a time is where I'm at. Um, and allowing me to really put my hand in the hands of God and literally every decision I make, I hand it over to him. I say, tell me what to do and I'll do it. And so it's, you know, a little, a little over six months over now, every day is a challenge. Every day I make it through only by his grace and will that I'm here today. So. Wow. Thank you so much for sharing that. That yeah. will win out of anybody's sales. Well, should. Um, yeah. So, you you actually shared in in your um, experience of or your sharing rather that you blamed your boyfriend um, during the time that you were dealing with this situation. Did you, and I just want to be clear because I may have missed it. But did you blame your circumstances or yourself at any time? And I, well, you you said yourself also because you allowed the uh, experience and you allowed it again. But just to be clear. Me. Just to be just to be clear, my new way of looking at my every single aspect of my life now, which is I've allowed this. Every every single action that I've taken or not taken has led up to this point in my life. That's on me. And yeah, as as a as a recovering alcoholic and addict, I'm very very clear that my two best friends have always been justification and rationalization. Those are my two best friends. And yeah. so when those when those are your two best friends, you never have to take responsibility for your life. Ever. And I blamed him. I blamed my circumstances. I blamed my poor parents. I blamed my childhood. I blamed society. I blamed white America. I blamed the government. I blamed, I blamed the girls that bullied me as a kid. I blamed everything except taking responsibility for how am I creating this life. Mm. And I understand addiction is a disease of the mind. Depression, anxiety, they all start in the mind. And knowing this and having this awareness, I knew this. But I wasn't doing anything different about it because it's too easy 
to just sit and blame other people and circumstances. That's easy. It's so easy to do that. It's much harder to practice rigorous honesty and look at yourself and say, wow, I really screwed my life up. I've, I've really done me wrong this time. Like I've really messed up. No one wants to sit in that. But I knew in order for things to be different and in order to give myself a second chance, third chance, whatever, I had to be willing to stare at myself face to face and look at the good, the bad, and the very, very ugly parts of my life and by character defects. Okay. And that was during the – when you stopped caring about who to, who or what to blame, that was six months ago when you lost the last job. On yeah. The, yeah. Yeah. Like, I, I've always okay. had a very great sense of personal responsibility. Like, in fact, I, I sometimes take on the blame more than I need to or take more responsibility than I need to. But I'll pick and choose. I used to pick and choose what I wanted to be responsible for and what I didn't want to be responsible for. What I learned this time around, and I got to say, I've learned more about myself and grown more in the past six months than I've learned in 37 years of my existence. Mm-hmm. Because I realize you don't get to pick and choose what you want to be responsible for. Your life is 100% your responsibility, no matter what your circumstances are. That, for mm-hmm. me, gives me my power back. Wow. But the minute, True. yeah, the minute I'm like, yeah, but you don't understand, but you don't understand all the injustices that we have in the world. All of that is fine and dandy, and all of that is real, and all of that exists. But what am I going to do differently? How do mm-hmm. I choose to show mm-hmm. up each and every day? It's not easy. It's not easy. Like, for the longest time, especially as a woman of color, right, I'm the child of immigrants. And I don't look like I don't look like the majority in in our country. And I always used to be wow. like, well, you don't understand. I'm not getting speaking gigs because why would anyone want to want to ask somebody named Vasavi with this weird name? And I'm brown and I'm not white. I had I had the best sexiest excuses why I couldn't get to another level in my life. Yeah, personally, or, personally or mm. professionally. But you know what? That's that's a cop out. That is what the cowardly say. And when it came to my professional life, I think I moved past that really quick because that was just kind of my fire that I had inside me. Like, I will succeed professionally no matter what. It was my personal life that always suffered. That is the truth. Um, I always had an excuse as to why my personal life did not match up to my professional life. And I I have to be honest with you and say that. So now it's like I'm really focused more on the personal life. People want all the entrepreneurial strategy, and they want to know exactly how to build your business, and they want to know how to get clients and – but if you don't work on that internal stuff between your ears, it doesn't matter how much strategy you have if if your insides are a mess. Wow. Thank you so much, Rosalie. That was powerful. So in thinking about our theme, and I'm, I'm just not going to step over number, uh, the but I know that you have already responded to that, which was when did you see the light and possibility, the, the light of freedom and possibility, and what action did you take? And – in thinking about our theme, strength of spirit, what are you present to when it comes to saying what you want in your personal life? Well, let me tell you this. What I want and what's meant for me are two different things. <laughs> so yeah. I can say I want X, Y, Z. It could be like I want this gig or I want this client or I want this. I want, I want. I want. It's a disease of the more, right? We want more mm. always. Mm. But like what I want and what is destined for me and what is God's plan are two very different things. So now what I'm present to, listen, this is the way I got, I, I brought more of him into my life. My, and I, I do work with a sponsor through AA. And she said this to me, it's the best exercise anyone's ever told me. She said, from your littlest decisions, I want you to ask God, what would you have me do right now? From what do I need to eat to who do I need to call to can I go to the bathroom? And it sounds so stupid, but let me tell you something. When you hand over every single decision to a to a to a a greater power than yourself, because guess what? My my thinking is broken. Why would I rely on my own thinking that that got me to where I am? Why would I rely on broken thinking to give me whole solutions? No. My mind is what got me here. Wow. <laughs> Lots of me, that is powerful. It's, that is like, it's stupid. It's, it's just plain, it, that's insanity. That's insanity. That is the definition of insanity. Why would I keep relying on myself to to make the right decisions when I've clearly not made the right decisions when it comes to my personal life? So now where I'm at is every decision, whether it's 
well, how am I going to answer this question right now? How am I going to respond to my fiance? I'm now engaged to somebody beautiful, very, very, that was just handed to me, honestly, on a silver right. platter. Right. How am I going to respond to the cashier at Starbucks that may be giving me an attitude or I, I take it so personally? <laughs> how am I going to respond to her? That's where pausing, before, mm. we, before we react, right, instead of, uh, instead of reacting, why don't we act? And before we act, why don't we pause? Because, mm. like, for me, I react. And that's gotten me into, like, nothing but trouble. So for me, this is the way it goes. It's like, let me pause. Let me ask God, what would, what would you have me say to this person right now? Because if everyone is a child of God, then how dare I treat you badly, right? And it's not easy. I'm not saying I'm this, like, Mother Teresa. I'm not. But let me tell you this. I need to do that daily reprieve every day in order to stay sober, emotionally and in all aspects. I have to do that work every day, moment to moment. And I feel like if people did that more often, whether you're in recovery or you're sober or you're not, we'd make better decisions and we would have more of what we wanted, whatever that is. Um, but it's like pausing and then doing the opposite of what we would normally do, right? What we would most probably do is snap at somebody, judge somebody, talk down to somebody, assume that it's personal, right? But how about the opposite of that is maybe they're having a bad day. Maybe it's not about me. Let me come at this person with some love and kindness. Wow. Instead of hostility and volatility, right? That's where I'm at right now. Okay. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. thank you so much. And, yes, <laughs> we could definitely continue on. Right now, Vasavi, I'm going to acknowledge you uh, for your powerful <laughs> just a few minutes. And yeah. we're going to ask the team to please share what they see about their own life from your sharing, from Vasavi sharing, and the difference her sharing has created for them. So I'm going to start with Ronnie V, then Diva Nikki, I'm going to ask you to share. So just hold your reins, lady, because I hear you. I don't fight. you. <laughs> yes. So Ronnie V, would you please like to share what you see about your life? Ronnie B? Okay. Are you muted? Okay, we're going to let him manage. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. It, it's so tempting uh, to go straight into acknowledging Miss Gumar. It really is, because everything was so powerful. And um, one of the things that I, that I got present to is, is that um, is don't diminish, I'm not diminishing what she says by saying what I say about myself. Mm -hmm. So that in itself, uh, you know, just opened up something. Like, wow, you know, I don't have to be on eggshells that I'm going to overshadow something that someone else said because, mm -hmm. you know, that, that was powerful. And, uh, you know, given the, the theme strength of spirit, you know, I just look at myself and I'm going, wow. You know, uh, I really got present to responsibility begins with the willingness to be cause in the matter of one's life. Yeah. Ultimately, it is a context from which one chooses to live, chooses yeah. to live. And, uh, you know, I... I, I I, I hear you, Sister Kamal, mm -hmm. that broken mind. But I also hear this and I also stand. This is my mind, and I do with it as I choose. Yeah. Now, I might have to connect to my higher power so that I can control my mind, but it is my mind, and I do with it as I choose. I am a child of God. So that's what, part of what I get present to. And that uh, when, when I'm being that way, all the love is there. The most powerful thing is there. And that will transform whatever needs to be transformed. So uh, thank you for sharing. And, uh, oh, just, just. You know, just to really get that, you know, wow, you know, just just go for it. Thank you, Ronnie B. Thank you. 
Nikki, love, what would you like to share about what you see from your life regarding both of these sharing? Well, ironically, um, addiction, because I am struggling with sugar addiction. And I just recently, like literally like earlier today, I was literally online like, okay, what are all of the symptoms I had? You know, I know I'm struggling with sugar, but what are the symptoms of a sugar addiction? Let me check and see if this is an issue with me. And Mm. lo and behold, there it is. And I'm like, you know what? And yeah, right. And I'm like, I don't, I don't like this, you know, because and <laughs> even though it's not a drug addiction, even though it's not an alcohol addiction, it's not a caffeine addiction. An addiction is an addiction, period, yeah. right? Yeah. And it's so easy to sweep something like a sugar addiction under the rug. Mm. It's so easy to try to, you know, to it, it really is. And, you know, so for me, it's being very present to that and not placing blame or making excuses for anyone or about anyone. It's no matter what, no matter what, taking full responsibility myself and saying, wow, well, it's a good thing that I'm looking at this now versus Mm. never. (laughs) Or a good thing that I'm looking at this now versus five years from now, Mm. you know? Mm -hmm. And and being present to the possibility of any challenges that there may be, but being responsible for them all Mm. and being responsible every day. Wow. Mm. And the faith, possibly. It is, you know, when as you were speaking, and you're like, it seems, you know, it 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 it, it, it seems so small, or, or it seems too wild, you know, to say, you know, like if it's okay to go to the bathroom or everything. But you know what the scripture tells us? The scripture what? says, consider God in all your ways, in all your ways, and I will direct your path. And the thing about God, the thing about the Most High, the thing about our Creator is that He is concerned about every intricate detail of our lives. Yeah. You know what's great about that? Can I just, can I just say something real quick? Yes. Yes. You know, and I, I'm so glad you said that in the scripture it says that. And I, while I'm, I was raised a Hindu, I, I do appreciate all scriptures, right? Like I, I, I do. There's mm-hmm. beauty in every scripture. But like when I was told and when I realized that like, wait a minute, you're telling me I don't have to run on self-will anymore? You mean I don't need to control <laughs> every aspect of my life? You mean there is another way to live and I don't have to be in charge? Wow, the type A <laughs> controlling freak in me actually relaxed for a minute. Mm. Yeah. Like, wow, you mean I don't have to hold it together all the time? You mean there is someone, <laughs> something out there that actually wants me to win and wants me to love my life and I don't have to be, manage it? Great. Awesome. Give me some more of that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, now, now, just so I can, uh, I, I just wanted to uh, interject this one thing, okay? And this is just to be responsible because we have to be responsible to all of our listening our audience. Do not come away hearing what they just said as now you get to give up responsibility. That right. is not right. what they said. They did yeah. not. Mm. See, some of y'all are going to hear that as now I can make God and Jesus my excuse. Mm-hmm. for not being responsible because, see, I turned it over to God. I don't have to be responsible anymore. See, you little slick devil. <laughs> yeah. That's you little slick devil, you will turn that around, and then you will say, I was listening to Grow Your Mind and Money. Mm-hmm. And Deepa Mickey brought out the scripture and said, I don't have to be responsible because it's God's mm-hmm. fault. And that is not what the scripture says. And, and that is, and that is not what even Nikki said, but that is what they will do. 
Now I'm just being right. responsible. So, uh, but I will say that 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 the empress needs to carry on. Uh, thank you, Mr. Responsibility. <laughs> Yes, that, that's very true. Yes, I'm happy you made that distinction. Absolutely, Ronnie, and I, I thank you for interjecting. I was just being patient and waiting until they were finished, but <laughs> but I appreciate that. Everything is decent and in order and works according to the way it should. Diva Nikki, were you complete with uh, what, we, what you were sharing about what you saw for your life before I move forward? I don't want to. I can be. Okay. I'm I, fine. I, I very well can be. Thank you. Yeah. Um, okay. We can just say that I am in complete agreement <laughs> with God being acknowledged in our every step. Thank you so much. So, mm. Vasavi, um, and, and as for myself, what I got from your sharing for myself was to never give up, no matter how grim things may be, whether I realize it or not. And whatever level of addiction, addiction is anything, you know, from sucking your thumb to eating too much, drugs, alcohol, to workaholics. I used to be yeah. such a work, like my God. And now, you know, that's not me anymore because I got I got responsible. And, you know, I used to be that yes person, which is in alignment with that because, I would never tell anyone no. I did not understand how me not saying no was impacting me while I was so busy worrying about being concerned with how no would impact everyone else. And then I said no one day, and I saw the difference that it made in life and how I had to own up to who I was being and who I started to choose to be and what had been stopping me and how I allowed myself to stop loving. Stop loving is not just love of other people or love in a relationship. This is love, period. Because I forgot about loving me. I was no longer, I I had not, not no longer, hell, I had not been (laughs) responsible for myself and putting myself first and making a difference in my life. So, therefore, when I was full, I could contribute and contribute powerfully with a yes if I so yep. choose yep. to do, do so. But I was so busy giving, 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 and not understanding the concept of receiving and not necessarily receiving from others, which would have been great, but receiving from myself, which would have made all the difference in the world. And I could have yeah. been somewhere different. However, I have no regrets because had I gone through the experience and the, and the, and the challenges and, the, and that life that I was going through, I would not have discovered love and love in every capacity and starting with, starting with my son, starting with the love of my life, starting with God and being present to asking him for approval for everything while standing on faith. And being okay with that. And really, like you said, Vasavi, pause, ask God for even the small decisions, not just the large decisions, and then taking the actions that are contradictory to what I would have done in the past. And really being clear in presence of the experience and receiving what there is that God has for me and everyone else to receive to where we all have a better life and a better experience. And no, it ain't going to always be perfect. Not saying that. Not going to always be perfect. I'm going to still make some mistakes, and I'm going to still do it my way <laughs> on occasion. <laughs> but yeah. The, or the consequences that comes as a result of me not owning up to and standing in my word. So thank you so very much for sharing. Um, and, and, and each of you, Ronnie B. and Nick, and, and Ronnie, I, I really acknowledge you for pulling that out um, in the conversation when you did. So we will hear more from Vasavi later in the show. Did you please take us to break, my dear? Stay tuned for the corner where we are featuring music from Araya 
and my interview with our guest, Bhakti B. Kamar. Thank you. Welcome back. We give it all to you on Grow Your Mind and the Money, and we do it all with love. Now it's time for the corner with Mr. Ronnie, so let's give him a smooth mwah and a rose. Mr. Ronnie, over to you. Thank you, thank you. Welcome to the corner. We are featuring music from Araya. We ask the team, which includes our guests, to vote whether the track should get a smooch and a rose or if it needs more fertilizer. Now, the name of this track is Heavy DJ Rolling. to find out what the panel thinks of heavy. So, team, is heavy getting a smooch and a roll to some free fertilizer? Prosperous Diva Nikki, how say ye? I'm in favor of it. I like it. 
I like it. Smooth tenor rolls for me. Mm. Oh. <clears throat> well, Diva Nikki a whole is giving out a smooth tenor rolls. And Wasabi? a whole roll. Oh. Yes. Wait, wait. A whole smooth uh, um, and a whole roll. With a whole smooch and a whole roll. She is not, uh, uh, she's, uh, she is fully into it. Uh, Madame Kumar. Oh, I'm here. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm listening. I, I didn't hear. Sorry. I <laughs> know. You're awesome. Are you giving it a smooch and a roll or free fertilizer? Uh, uh, free fertilizer. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I have no idea what this means. I just like free fertilizer better. Ah, uh, you threw it out the free fertilizer. <laughs> I have no idea. Oh. I honestly don't know what this means, so if I'm being, like, inappropriate, please excuse me, because I don't know what that means. I'm <laughs> oh. oh, she needs to explain it to us, Annie B. Uh, <laughs> it sounds so no, great. Well, well, well a smooch, a smooch of the rose is like a thumbs up. It's a great track, or at least okay. a good track. Okay. Uh, free fertilizer, they need a little more work or a lot of work. Oh, my God, I'm or so sorry. Fine, the first one. No, this was great. I'm so sorry. It was smooch in a row, yeah. <laughs> smooch in a row. All right, okay, all righty, okay. After a, a conference with the replay judge, <laughs> so there are two smooches and a rose. Empress Nakia. Oh, God. I have I'm to nervous. make them responsible for the guests, and they know what the difference is. Because I wonder, have anyone else just not said they didn't have a clue? Thank you. Yeah. I'm so honest. <laughs> so for myself, I'm a bunch of smooches, kisses, and roses. I think that was a track, and I was really clear with her communication and it being heavy. And I get it. And that was really <laughs> It was heavy, for sure. Absolutely. So, Ronnie V, uh, tell her to bring on some more. That is awesome. Thank <laughs> you. Oh, wow. Well, um, you know, I was listening to Heavy, and I was like, you're deep, girl. I'm with you. <laughs> I, I knew yeah. where she was coming from. I, I was like, I feel you, baby. I feel you. It, 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 and I was trying to slide my number over there, too, but, uh, you know, virtually. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah. all right, all right. I'm giving it a smooch and a rose. So it looks like smooches and roses. Uh, all the way around. All right. If you like the music from Araya, you can check her out on Instagram, and that's Araya, A-R-Y-A, is Ali, A-L-I-E, and the Old Grumpy Radio Network. Now it's time to continue our interview with Madame Kumar, champion for humanity. Over to prosperous diva Nikki. Thank you, Ronnie B. Thank you. And thank you, Vasati, for staying with us for your interview with me. Let's get started because I'm so excited. Now, thank in you. this segment, you're welcome. In this segment, we will learn more about Vasati as a speaker, coach, licensed therapist, and entrepreneur. So, Vasati, please share the aha, that aha moment when you mm-hmm. knew in your heart of hearts that it was time for you to start a business. It's, it happened so naturally. And I, I think that's really when, when I was younger. So when I was like 26, 27, I was graduating from Columbia university in New York with my master's in social work. And I came across um, an article sent by my mom's friend who said, have you heard of the coaching industry? So I read this article it was in the New York times. And it was all about how people are helping other people really create a future um, and and, and help them move forward from the present into the future. And having been in therapy myself and also being trained as a therapist and doing a lot of work focused more on the past, by the way, both are very valuable. So I'm not not disregarding one or the other. Um, I was really fascinated with like, oh, my God, you mean we can actually create our own future? I had no idea. And that was really what coaching was all about. So – 
I went into a year-long coaches training program right after I graduated from Columbia. And in this program, they encourage us to go out and start selling ourselves and our services and the possibility of, you know, helping people create a create a better possibility and create a better life for themselves. And I was just able to do it because I really truly believed that we are we were the creators of our life. And I came with the price tag and I was I just in my head I just was like, well, I'm providing a service. You need it or or you say you need it and so this is this is how it's going to work transactionally. So, both my parents are in business for themselves. My mom is a private practice doctor, she's a cardiologist. My father is in private practice. He's a CPA. I always saw them I always saw them really doing very well and I wondered like how, I always used to ask them as a young girl I was like how do you make this much money and my mom and dad always always said service first the money will follow so in my head it was so natural for me to embark on this entrepreneurial journey because for me it was like oh I just want to help people if I'm going to help people yeah like the money will come no biggie the money will come cuz I just want to help people and that's it and so that it it was like a the aha was always there. I just didn't have the oppor like it, the, the opportunity had to present itself. And when I was in this coaches training program, and they they encouraged us to go out and get clients and whatever, that path was being carved for me, and I didn't even know. But I just said yes, and that's really what it boiled down to, right? We always have opportunities that are around us, but we got to be willing to to say yes and to pay attention to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's what it was for me. Nice. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Um, what circumstances, people, or new challenges come into consideration as you do the work to hone your craft and build your business? That's a great question. So I just want to make sure I understood. So you want to know basically who is, do you want to know who's impacted by the work that I do and as I hone my craft or who has helped me on this path? Can you just repeat that again? Oh, no, like no time. problem. I want to know the challenges. Would circumstances, people, or new challenges come into consideration as you're doing the work to hone your craft and build your business? Um, I would say that as I hone my craft, I'm able to impact people that I didn't necessarily think would benefit from me. Like, I, I, I think, you hmm. know, when you start out in business, we're told, Find your niche, find your niche, find your niche. And that's important. I get it. It is very important. And I did that for 10 years. And um, as I continue to hone my craft, and I just want to clarify that my craft right now is really about being the best version of myself from the inside out. That is the only craft I care about right <sighs> now. Because I, don't, I have the skills. I have the marketing skills. I have the speaking skills. I know how to write. I know how to get media attention. I know how to do everything to inflate my ego really well. Um, mm -hmm. people, yeah, I, I'm, I'm really good at puffing my chest out. I'm very good at getting recognition. I'm very good at getting seen and known and paid. What I'm honing my craft in is to have my um, inside match my outside. So for me, I got all the outside looking good. For me, honing my craft right now is trusting myself, taking it one day at a time slowing down, pausing before I speak, pausing before I make a decision, not being so selfish, not being so self-seeking, not always look like put, putting myself before everybody else, looking at what other people want, you know, not just having the world revolve around me. And so what I'm learning about myself as I hold my craft and the people that it's affecting and the people that I'm taking into consideration, honestly, is everyone around me. It doesn't matter who you are. I don't care if you're a person of big significance and importance. I don't care. You could be the you could be the guy at the convenience store, you know, selling me my pack of gum. It doesn't matter. But everyone is being impacted by me honing my craft. And my craft right now is to really live a life of integrity, character, and being a woman of my word and treating everybody like God's children because they are. And coming, moving forward in life with love and kindness rather than righteousness and self-indignation. In, so, mm. yeah, mm. that's where I'm at. I love it. Yeah. Mm. Well, what then, with that being said, are your measures for success from a personal and business perspective? 
That's really good. Okay, so from a professional standpoint, I see my metrics of success is obviously reviews. Like I do a lot of freelance writing. I do coaching for my clients. I provide concierge therapy and coaching, which is like you basically can hire me on retainer per, per month, right? If people keep coming back, that's a good sign. If you refer me to other people, that's a good sign. If when I ask you how has your experience been working with me and you have good things to say and you – or you even if you have areas of improvement for me, that's fine too. Uh, I look at the results in your life as a result of our work together, right? So you can tell me how great I am. That doesn't matter to me. What matters is has your life improved as a result of our interaction? That's what I care about. Like, are you happier? Are you more comfortable in your skin? Are you able to verbi- you know, to, to have boundaries and to verbally exercise your boundaries? Do you feel good when you look in the mirror? Do you have more confidence as a result of our work together? That is how I measure it. And I can only, I can only ve- measure that by what, what, by what my clients tell me, right? So if they're like, I am happier and I feel X, Y, Z better and I feel more confident and I'm more at peace, great. My work is done. My work has been a success. Um, so that's how I measure on a professional level. On a personal level, um, I think it would be probably answering to myself very honestly from um, at the end of the night when I go to bed, if I can go to sleep with absolutely not a single conflict in my head about like, man, I shouldn't have talked this, per- this way to this person or I should have treated myself better or I shouldn't have said this. If I can go to sleep conflict-free, I would say I'm doing okay. Mm-hmm. And, <laughs> and um it, and, and I will add to that, I do definitely end my night every day asking, have I helped one person today? It doesn't matter who it is. Mm. It doesn't need to be it doesn't need to be in exchange for money. Could it be the old lady who could not open the door because she had groceries in her hand? I know it sounds generic, but it's true. Could it be somebody at actually this just happened the other day. This woman, where were we? Uh we were oh, I was checking out of a grocery store and she was in front of me. And I can be a little, people may assume things about me, right? I mean, I got my fancy jewelry. I got my nice bag on. I got my big sunglasses on. You may look at me and think like, oh, this this chick is bougie. She doesn't, you know, she's not nice. I, I could come off that way. And I, you know, I, I could come off that way because of what I look like on the outside, right? Everything's put together. My hair is done. I got my nice bag. I got my nice clothes on. And uh, I never want people to feel like I'm, I'm, I'm not approachable. But this one lady in front of me in line in the grocery store started talking to me, and I started talking back at her. We had a great conversation, and she, like, waited till I finished bagging my groceries, and she, we continued talking all the way to her car. And she said, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me. Like, we were literally were talking about, like, clothes and recipes, and she was like, what? She's like, mm. she goes, I love your groceries. What are you making? And I told her, I was like, oh, I'm making a five-cheese macaroni and cheese for a potluck. And we just started talking, and I know that I'm very aware of the energy that I bring into any space. I'm aware of it. I'm, I'm aware that I could come off as somebody. I have big energy. I know that about myself. I've known that since I was a young child. I've been told that by my mentors. Uh, Lisa Nichols was my mentor. is still my mentor. And um, she was in the movie The Secret, for those of you who don't know, but she's a great speaker. And she always said to me, Vasavi, you have to manage your energy because you walk into a room. You have big energy. And I don't mean that as like, oh, my God, I'm so much better than everybody. No, that's not what that means. It means like I have big energy. Like I I can walk into a room and you know that I'm there. And I never want anyone to feel like I'm not approachable. And so for me, that made me feel good. Like that woman was kind of looking at me up and down. And then I think she wanted to like talk to me. And I talked back to her. We had a great conversation. And that felt good because, you know, people are alone in this world. Maybe she has no one to talk to. Who knows? But if I can put a smile on her face and make her feel good about herself, why not? And that makes me feel good. And that's my metric for success. How many people did I make feel good about themselves today just by talking to them, you know, acknowledging their presence? Oh, that's I love to it. Yeah. That's important to you. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. Well, you've kind of answered this in your other questions, but I'm going to ask anyway. So please share a specific moment or event where your efforts bring a smile to your face. That's such a – that okay, well, I'll, I'll talk about it on a personal level. Um, I have always used force since I was a kid 
to get what I want, meaning um, I've always had to try to be convincing or manipulative and try to say the right thing to get what I want because I can read people very well, and I've used that to my advantage, sometimes a disservice. And in this new path that I'm on, and I've always strived to be this person, but this time it's really sticking because I'm doing the work. Um, I, when it comes to the opposite sex in my personal relationships, it has never been easy. But what's putting a smile on my face these days because I can really feel the effort is I am much patient, much more patient and much more understanding and not having to be all about me. When I talk to my fiance, Ben, he's like the sweetest guy in the world. And I will steamroll him because I am, that's me. I get what I want all the time. That's me. I do what I want. I get what I want. I say what I want when I want it because I know what I want and I want it right now. That's me. That, that, is, mm-hmm. that is who I've always been. And in this new season of my life, that's not who I want to be because that version of me got me into a lot of trouble in my life. So mm. recently, okay, so get this. He, um, he watches football and he loves his football. Like, I don't understand how men watch six hours of football a day, but he can. And, uh, like, tonight it's a Cowboys game, and, he's, you know, he has his jersey on, and he's all excited. But last weekend, I said to him, I go, listen, um, so Saturday you're going to be watching a few hours of football, right? And he's like, yeah. I was like, well, do you want to make sure we spend some time together this weekend? He's like, absolutely. So he, like, planned this whole thing for us to do on Sunday, and we did it, and it was great. Now, it put a smile on my face, and it was such a small shift, okay, because in the past I would have been like, you don't spend time with me. But I would have been all whiny. I would have been like a damsel in distress, right? I would have been like, you don't, want, you don't love me. You don't want to spend time with me. Like, literally, that's what I would have said. And I have no shame in admitting it because that's not who I am anymore. But I realize mm-hmm. with, any, with anyone in your life, right, like, you don't get what you want by steamrolling people. You don't get what you want by manipulating people. Like, they may say yes, but they may not feel safe with you, right? Like, just because somebody says mm-hmm. yes to you doesn't mean that they feel safe with you. Right? They may be saying yes because wow. they're just kind of shutting you up, you know? Mm-hmm. So that puts a smile on my face. It puts a smile on my face when my parents open up to me. Like, I start to see my mom and dad as, as a man and a woman, not as mommy and daddy anymore. Um, I see my mom for the woman that she is, not just for my, you know, my mother. I see my dad. He admits things to me, and he talks to me about things that you don't necessarily want to hear your parents admit because you don't want to look at them as human but they're human they were a man and woman before they were your mother or father so Mm -hmm. who i've changed how i've changed as a person has allowed my parents to be more of themselves and for me that is the greatest gift that i can give anybody as long as i am more of myself loving and kind which is how we were all born we were not born mean we were not born cruel We were all born Mm -hmm. kind and loving individuals, and I truly believe that. And so the more I tap back into that, tap into that, the more I bring it out in others, and the more people feel safe to be themselves around me. That, for me, is success, and that, for me, puts such a huge smile on my face and makes my heart feel really, really warm and full these days. Mm, Thank you for sharing. So we are now going to ask the team to please share what they see about their life from philosophy sharing and the difference her sharing created for them, and I'm going to start with Empress Nakia. Um, wow. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> you know, um, for myself, what was what really resonated with me was the manipulation conversation because for so many years in in different areas of my life, not even knowing until I recently took a course this summer, not even realizing that I had been being manipulative in relationships and situations to get what I want. That was not present to that. And in that course and sitting in that classroom and and being really into the conversation and the sharing and the coaching, it was like so confronting. Mm-hmm. And I had to really get present to why there were decisions that I made and there were experiences that I was left with. And it was people to complete with because I couldn't get what I wanted. 
Mm. Because at the end of the day, it was about what I wanted. It wasn't a consideration of they wanted and they're listening for what they wanted and made a difference for them. It was it was about me. Mm-hmm. And and however you want to dress it to make it look, it ain't pretty. Because when you are not old people in the listening of who they are, getting their concern, then you focus all about you, you in your head, and trying to figure out how you get out. So where at the end of the day, the end result is what you want. <laughs> yep. And I had to make some phone calls. I had to get clear with people, and I had to go to people and ask for forgiveness. And I had to forgive myself. I had to start off with forgiving myself because I couldn't even go to them and ask for forgiveness and get clear and get complete if I could forgive myself because at that point the cycle continues. Hmm. And conversation with those individuals, with the sharing and with the acknowledgments of those individuals and who they are to me and to the world, whether there's a difference of, of opinion or not, didn't matter. At the end of the day, I was free. Mm. I was no longer attached. I was no longer the victim. I was no longer <laughs> the one that didn't have her way. I was no longer the one that wasn't loved and paid attention to. I, I, all the excuses, the rackets, the this, the that, the that, the that, the that, all that was gone, and I was free. And with that freedom, allowed to powerfully choose myself and powerfully choose who they are or what that situation was or what that circumstance was and powerfully move forward without the baggage. And we're going to talk about baggage. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Thank you, Nakia. Mr. Bonnie? Wow. You know, I was getting present to so much um, from Nakia sharing. And, uh, you know, and and, and it just goes back to responsibility begins with the willingness to be caused in the matter of one's life. Ultimately, Hmm. it is a context from which one chooses to live. See, we make the mistake of thinking that freedom means no responsibility. If I have no responsibilities, I have freedom. It's the opposite. It's the opposite. The more responsible you are and the more responsible that you're willing to demand the more power you have with your world. Things don't happen to you by accident. There is serendipity. Now, that's different. There is serendipity, but there are no accidents because you're being responsible for what happens in your current world, and there has to be a willingness. So, you know, I just really got, got, got present to that, and you know, I just and, and I also I got I, I got present to uh, we don't know the difference that we make. You know, we may have a personal I may have a personal measure, but I don't really know the difference I make because that they may not just take the time to drive up and knock on my door and go, man, what you said that kept you know me and my wife is together. Uh, they didn't happen to do that today, but I might have done that from just something I said. Um, Prosperous Diva Nikki, I'm sharing with her about one of my sisters and how she's been divorced for three times, and this and the final husband, like the third time's the charm, and that one of her husbands she married, divorced, married, and divorced them again, and she made this statement, and I I don't get that she got that there was actually a difference made. Because every time you say something, there's an opportunity for transformation. Mm -hmm. And she said, and this is what she said, some things you have to get out of your system. Now, she didn't get how powerful that was. Some things you have to get out of your system. I've been sitting up there all week going, you know what? You know, Ronnie, you've been beating yourself over this, over that, over this. 
you know, some things you just ain't got out your system yet so that you can just go ahead and do what you're going to do and be who's needed and wanted for the difference that I'm here to make. And yet, you know, there's some things I need to get the hell up out of my system, you know, and get them out quick, get clear, you know, and, and, and it was just so wonderful. And I get, she had no clue, because I didn't go, hey, Nikki, guess what? Hey, 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 Nikki, guess what? You said so, so, so. (laughs) Now, that don't mean that there are times that that don't happen. But a lot of times, we don't get that we've said something, that someone we care about, it made a big difference, and they're looking at it. Mm, mm, Wow. Wow. All of this powerful sharing. Thank you, Mr. Ronnie. You know, what I see about my life from all of this and from philosophy sharing and is seeing people, everyone, for who they are as a person, regardless to the relationship, especially when it comes to family. The serving, being of service, um, communicating what you want in a way that doesn't sound manipulative and without playing the victim, I get all of that. But what stood out, stood out, stood out, and made a real difference in this time is seeing people, seeing your family for who they are. Your mother was a woman. Your brother is a man. Your uncle, before it was your uncle, was a man. Your aunt, before it was your aunt, was a woman. And then, along with that, all of the people that you meet through them, their friends, that become like your play aunt and your play uncle and your play brothers. It's like, before they were all that, they were a man. They were a woman. What do you see in them and how can you relate to them as just that and not the relationship? I think when I, first of all, oh, my God, this is a great question. The first thing that comes to my mind is when I don't need anything from you, when I don't need you for validation, when I don't need you for approval, when I don't need you to validate my existence, when I don't need you to make me feel good about myself, I can just be with you. <laughs> and. It's just me and it's just you, and I don't need you to say the right thing, and I don't need you to look at me the right way, and I don't need you, you know what I mean? I don't need you to be perfect for me. It's so selfish, and it's so self-seeking to use other human beings for for the job that we need to be doing for ourselves. And, mm. and, and if we have that relationship with our higher power, rather than placing all that on other human beings, we'd probably be a lot happier. You know, expectations up, serenity down, right? I don't have those expectations from people because, number one, I get it from somewhere else that never fails me, and I give it to myself. So I don't need it from you. I can just be with you at this point. Mm-hmm. Mm, yeah. Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Well, Vasavi, of course, we could chat forever, but it looks like now definitely Empress Nikia, take us a break. All right. Up next, Shawnee's Sunshine Lounge Plus Lose the Baggage. So please soon. Welcome back. We give it all to you. On Grow Your Mind and Money, do it all with love. Now, Shiny left the keys to the lounge with Diva Nikki. So let's see what's going on in the lounge. Diva Nikki, what's going on? Um, all right, all right, all right. Welcome to the Shiny Sunshine Lounge, where we feature a mixture of goodies that will stimulate your mind. And maybe have you tap your feet. Tonight we have an awesome poet, Shani, the original Sunshine Prince of Poetry herself, is performing 
Hell of a woman. Hey, 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 I'm Shani the Poet, the original Sunshine Princess of Poetry. And as usual, I have something special for you. One hell of a woman. I need all of my real women to stand up and be recognized. She is, you are, and I am and will always be one hell of a woman. For all the tears that I've had to cry. For all the pain that I've had to endure, my smile still shines through. I'm able to give you what you need to be you. I am the strength you crave and the wisdom you wish to absorb. One hell of a woman. I can keep your secrets and tell when you lie, release you from your pain or make you cry. I have the ability to step out on faith and still say what's on my mind. I found peace last night when I cried. So yes, I'm still on my grind. Because I am one hell of a woman. You still can't comprehend the way I've had your back. I've worn many different hats. And although you may not recognize all that I am and all that I am becoming, it will not stop me from sharing what makes me me. See, God broke the mold when he created Shiny. There wasn't one like me before. And I promise you when I'm gone, there'll be no more. And I'm certainly not concerned about the whispers and the gossip. Yep. I'm on top of it. I am one hell of a woman. I am one of the chosen few. So you might want to think before you attempt to mistreat me. And no, I'm not holier than thou. But the universe does have my back and I ain't got no problem with saying that out loud. Because of him, I am one hell of a woman. I am planting roots. I'm speaking the truth. I'm able to love you and still have more than enough to love me too. I have the ability to create and sustain life and give love and I will fight when I know that I'm right. I'm balanced. I got a hell of a woman's insight. I am a crowd favorite on some days and a bitch on a day to day. For those of you who doesn't understand what that means, I'm beautiful. I'm intelligent. I'm talented. Charming. Hell of a woman, simply said. And even if you don't think so, I know my role. Can make you laugh. Can help you focus. Sometimes make you nervous when you rub me the wrong way. And yet still a hell of a woman every day. So you can do your worst. And I'll do my best. Moving forward to reflect. Leaving you to reflect on the fact that I am. And will always be. One hell of a woman. Shiny. I hope you enjoyed One Hell of a Woman. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you. So Empress Nakia is our sunshine going to get snap snaps or are you throwing tomatoes at our sun? What are you doing? Uh, see, I'm a hell of a woman. And uh, <laughs> I'm going to have to give this some snap snap to tap and go, go shiny, go shiny, go shiny, yeah. go shiny, go shiny. Okay. Thank you. About to see some more. And what are your thoughts on our sunshine? Are you going to give hell of a woman snaps? Or are yes, you women to... snaps. Okay, look, don't stop now. Snap, snap, Mr. Ronnie. Well, uh, I'm, I, I'm biased and I don't care. Snappity snaps. And if I wasn't biased, snappity snaps. So is this all around snap? Funny thing, somehow um, I was going to say that you, uh, your opinion might be biased, and I didn't say it, and then you said it for me. <laughs> okay, listen. <laughs> I'm a hell of a woman. It's all in me. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> I am mm-hmm. definitely a hell of a woman, and I'm definitely feeling our sunshine, our original sunshine piece of poetry. So snap, 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 snap. And if you enjoyed this performance by Shani, you can check her out at shinythepoet.com and also on Facebook forward slash Shani Sunshine Lounge and also, of course, the old Grumpy Radio Network. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now it's time to go over to Empress Nakia so we can lose the baggage. All right. Awesome. Thank you, Nikki. Okay. 
if you have, if you compare grow your mind and money to a line, you would notice we have no planes, no check-in lines, no attendants, pilots, or flights. What we promise is we will support you in losing baggage. Baggage in this case is in the form of a complaint, but not just anything, a complaint that has persisted over time. Now, this complaint does not have to be something traumatic or upsetting, and it could be. The complaint can be as simple as, I wish my spouse would take out the garbage. It pisses me off when they just leave it for me to take out. Why can't they just take it out? Now, if you are someone who never complains, maybe you have nonverbal complaints. You know, something or someone rubs you the wrong way, but you always let it go, but it really does rub you wrong, and you might get a little pissy about it, but don't say anything. Consider that's a complaint. We're going to do an exercise with our guest, Vasavi. We asked her to look at an area of her life that's important for her as a persistent complaint. Now, let me give you a little context for our conversation. As human beings, we love to be right, 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 right. And often that hides something from our view is our righteousness. In a current current world, it's not righteousness. We're simply right, and that's all. Now, those that know me, y'all know I love to say this. Pen and paper in hand, and if you don't have it, you better start coming to the show a little bit more often to be ready. <laughs> Create the following categories, money, freedom, relationships, and health. Mm-hmm. Money, freedom, relationships, those four categories. What we would like you to do is to let where you would like a breakthrough where you, you, you would like to have a breakthrough. Under that category, write down a complaint or an issue you have assisted for a while. And when that issue comes up, what way of being rises with it? Do you get angry, sad, maybe resigned or indifferent? Whatever way you feel, express as a way of being. Now, if you rarely complain, select a category and answer this question. What have I been putting up with or resisting or giving up on? Write a complaint that keeps persisting in that area. Write what you are being, what way, excuse me, write what way you are being around this issue or how you behave. How do you behave? Now, our guests, Vasavi, Nikki, and Ronnie, are going to exercise with you, and so am I. What is the future that immediately gets created when the issue How do you behave? How do you feel? What actions do you take? Now, let me check in with everyone and see how they're doing with the exercise. Ronnie B. Okay. okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. We have getting a little static on your uh, on your line there. Really? So you might okay. need to adjust adjust your mic a little bit. Okay. How is that? Much better. Much better. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Ronnie. All right. Please share the category. Persistent complaint the way you behave or feel when the issue arises. And what is the future that gets created immediately when this issue arises? <clears throat> okay. All right. Now, um, so, well, we were on the, the okay. Now, um, the category is relationships. And the complaint is 
And, and, and it just hit me how widespread it is. Because at first I was going one person, but then I looked at it and it's like, oh, everywhere. And what that complaint is, now, uh, the people I love the most, you know, the people I love the most, and y'all know who y'all are, that I love the most, they keep doing this one thing that pisses me off, and that is this. I do not request a lot. I don't ask a lot. I love them. And pretty much, if I got it, they know that, that even if I'm a no, sooner or later I'm going to be a yes. And I love them for that. Now, there are times that I have simple requests. And the simple requests are just because, look, you know what? I ain't got money falling out my behind. I got what I got. I do what I can, but I do love you. And my simple requests are usually this. May I please have a photograph or a quote? That's all. Can I have a picture of you and your husband? Can I have a picture of you and your boyfriend? Hey, niece, can I have a picture of you and the kids? You know, you know hey, person I love, may I just have a, a picture of you? You know, I cherish that's what I, I, you know, I may not be able to do or have whatever, but I love them, and, and I cherish those. I don't want all the, I don't need, just something that I can have that's unique and so can I have a quote? And it's like crickets, crickets, crickets. I'll send an email. I'll send a text. I'll leave a message. I'll ask. Crickets, crickets, crickets. So what I'm left with is it's like, um, so, uh, well, how I feel is like pissed off, like, like I don't matter. So I feel like I'm pissed off and I don't matter. You know, my little request don't matter. And, uh, what happens is, is that, uh, again, uh, what happens is, is that something will happen where it's like, oh, you know, anniversary, well, you know, just something where I get the thought. And I'll reach out, I'll make the request, I'll get crickets, <laughs> I'll be pissed, watch, rinse, repeat. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> that's the future that gets created is watch, rinse, repeat. Mm-hmm. Mm. Wow. Thank you, Ronnie B, for sharing. Now, crickets. Crickets, crickets. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to share uh, my category. Persistent plain and way I behave or feel when the issue arises. The future that gets created immediately when the issue arises for me. Okay? <laughs> my area is going to be the area of money. <laughs> and it's funny because the area of money is the financial aspect of things, but I'm also speaking of my son, who I call money. (laughs) So my son has this love for tennis shoes. He's 13, almost 14 years old, and he's this amazing kid that is just the season of his life where he likes these things. And tennis shoes just so happen it is high on his list. So, of course, I want him to have nice things, and I want to give him those things that, you know, I feel he should have. But every time I turn around, I get a text message on my phone, I get emails from Foot Locker, Foot Action, all these shoe stores, the latest Yeezy, this, that, and the other. I have not all this crap is, but he always tells me he's going to give me a story with lesson on it. And I just get annoyed. I get so, like, floored because I'm like, do you not realize that you're not going to get all of these shoes? You're not going to get these shoes. <laughs> or you might get one pair. <laughs> it's like I don't have an unlimited supply of money falling out my tailbone. <laughs> so I have him go through our monthly budget and look at what we have as an income, and he's responsible for for each bill, 
and seeing what the residual is so he can have a new relationship to money. And the next month comes, and it's the same thing after he's really good to, oh, that bill is really like that? That's that's the bill? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you have to pay the mortgage. It's all one amount each month? <laughs> It was just one time. Why? Rip, rip. He talks to me. And I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> so, yeah, that is created. Wash, rinse, repeat. <laughs> so, <laughs> please share the category persistent complaint in way you behave. Excuse me, or feel when the issue. What the future? What is the future that gets created immediately? It arises. Okay, so I chose him. Really, it's like business help. Girl, these love handles, money poo. She said love handles. Now here's the thing, girl. What? Yes. Now here's the thing, right? Here's the thing, is that other people say, I'm listening to somebody else, and they'll be like, you don't have any love. I'm like, shut up. Of course I have love handles, okay? I know a love handle when I see one, and I see love handles, okay? (laughs) And they're like, but you don't have a pooch like your little bed. I'm like, be quiet. I'm Mm. a little pooch when I see a little pooch, and I have a little pooch, okay? (laughs) <laughs> now, now, how does it make me feel Or what is present In the future What's there is frustration The complaint is You know what my complaint though is My complaint is other folks not being present To my complaint <laughs> And it's frustrating <laughs> Okay <laughs> oh gosh! Okay. You done? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm, okay. No, I'm not sorry. I'm energetically <laughs> not sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so your area is telling the bundles and the pooches. So you get frustrated and it's wash, rinse, repeat. And I wanted to make sure I was clear because I didn't know you was. <laughs> Then I was still waiting for some more. So, so okay, so then, okay, so, okay, all right, all right. So let me, all right, all right. So, like, I'm talking about the sugar addiction now, right? And uh-huh. there will still be people that will go, you can eat anything. No, no, I can't. No, I cannot eat anything. Mm. Oh, this won't bother you, girl. <laughs> That's a surprise. That won't mean nothing for you. Why do you, why do you think that? Okay. Mm. So here my complaint is not just my pooch and my handles that I see, it's for other people it's other people's perception. Okay. Of my complaint. So my complaint now is about the people that don't receive my complaint. Okay. That's my complaint. It's relationships. Okay. Got it. okay, so relationships <laughs> now. Not the health, it's relationships. Okay. <laughs> That's okay and it works. <laughs> All right. Lots of rinse, repeat. <laughs> Lots of rinse. Would yes. you please share the category persistent complaint and way you behave or feel when this issue arises? What if this issue gets created immediately when the issue arises? So I, I think it would be around, like, professional success right now and money because making money is – Okay, let me let me say this. Getting money has never been a problem for me. Keeping money, keeping good things in my life, keeping money has always been a problem. And it wasn't always like that. So this is the complaint or the fear. I'm, I, it's not a complaint. It's more of a fear, but I, I guess it's complaining shows up. But it's like, oh, my God, I used to make, you know, eight to 10000 a month with my solo coaching practice operating out of my house, and I blew it. And I blew it because I had this closet addiction. And I'm 
afraid that if I and, – and I just realized this, by the way. I realized this maybe two weeks ago. I had this, like, breakthrough moment. I was like, oh, my God, like, this is what's blocking me right now. Like, I'm afraid if I ever have that much financial freedom again, I'll blow it. Because, wow. yeah, like, I had – I made way above my means. Like, I mean, I, I live pretty below my means. Like, I, I love nice things, but I live below my means. I mean, I was raised by immigrants, so I'm not, I'm pretty frugal, you know? Um, but I value, I have my values on how I like to spend my money. It's on travel and simple luxuries and good food and, you know, you know, buying gifts for my niece and nephew, great. Books, education. And I had all that. And I didn't spend it on that. I spent it on cocaine and alcohol. That's what oh. I did. I, I I was blessed and lucky enough, and people people paid me a lot of money to work with me, and I couldn't – I have nothing to show for it. Wow. I have nothing to show for it, and that is the truth. And that is where I'm at, and I'm still making money right now. It's nowhere near what I used to make, and I'm, I'm rebuilding slowly because that's what rebuilding and rebirth looks like. It's not going to happen overnight, you know, but my, my recovery and my sobriety is first and foremost, which is why I'm not in workaholic mode. No way. Like I, I don't want anything getting between me and recovery and me and my sobriety, which is why I'm 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 slowing down a lot. And how this belief like manifests, I guess it it what it does to me it 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 almost it it, it takes me out of myself, which I think is good, mm-hmm. and it it allows me to be more of service to other people and not just have every interaction be transactional. Um, but yeah, there's definitely that fear right there, hundred percent. I'm not gonna lie. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Of course. Okay. So now having said the future that gets created immediately when the issue arises, what is now possible in dealing with this issue that would give you freedom and power? So, Mr. Ronnie, your issue was relationships. Now, what do you see possible? Okay, well, you know, just just looking at it is that the category was relationships, and the complaint is is that I'll just make a simple request, and it and it's like crickets. Right. And what happen is is that I'll make the, I'll be all excited because you know whatever I want to create or do or just feel, and it's just like 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 hey you don't your little requests don't matter. And um, what I can see, you know, just just really getting present. Um, well, what's present is is that you know I really do love the people I love. I really do love the people I love, and and they are special to me, and I want to be special to them. And when I make a request, uh, especially something that's personal. It's special in my world. And what I can be is gracious, that they love me, they care about me, and they're doing their thing. And that does not mean that I'm any less in their view, but they're living their lives, doing their things. And I appreciate, you know, and, yes, my heart may tug, like, oh, wow, I really wanted this. And that's okay. Because I really do love them. I love my love. So I can create the possibility of encompassing love in all its little manifestations. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Thank you, Ronnie B. So my issue, my area and category was money. My issue was my money, my son. Wanting to shoes and thinking money just, you know, falls out my cell phone. And that I have an unlimited supply. <laughs> that I was being annoyed, irritated, frustrated. And what I see from my is just being thankful. Hmm. Because he is a kid who wants nice things, has an eye for good quality, and he wants things. He could be a child who doesn't have a social awareness, is not in 
touch with current trends and reality, and it does keep me on my toes. And it gives me an opportunity to teach about finances more aggressively than I have in the past when he was younger to make sure that he's prepared for all there is that the world has to offer and that you have to go out and get in order to achieve your goals. Hmm. So I can relate to him and what what is possible for me is for me to continue and even further my expressions of love towards him and acceptance for who he is to me and to the world and who has who he has been created to be and it empowers him as I'm being empowered and knowing that at the end of the day when I'm no longer here that I have trained him and prepared him to know the difference between a want and a need and being responsible as a kid as a teenager, and as a flourishing adult. So, Diva Nikki, your issue Diva was... Nikki. Oh, okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, good, girl. I mean, I, I mean, I mean, I'm not sorry, but... Yeah, you're sorry. Right. You're right. So, your initial area, uh, our category was health and need change, like, okay? And mm-hmm. you were speaking of your love handles, your pooch, and people, your addiction to sugar, and how people, their perception of you was your complaint. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. And what do you now see as possible for your life? Well, what I see as possible now is a new way of communicating with those that I share my complaint with, where they can actually um, step into my world, shall we say, mm-hmm. um, and be more su- and be be supported from a new way of communicating that leaves me not frustrated with me sharing with them. Mm-hmm. Wow, got it. Now I don't know what that way is. Yet. But I do have a communication class coming up. (laughs) 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 Uh, Now, now this is not an interruption, but I would like, would you you like something to consider, a food for thought? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, just a little bit of a food for thought. No one has to get you. Mm-hmm. No one has to get you. It's nice that they get you. It's mm-hmm. nice, but mm-hmm. no one has to get you. Mm-hmm. No one has to get your communication to love you. They can love you and never get you. Apparently so, torches and all. They can love, yeah, yeah. So consider the grace of them never having to get you. Yeah. And and you just letting them love you, the way they love you and the way they don't. Yeah. See, then they don't need to be fixed, and you don't either. Yeah. Okay. So then it goes back. So then it comes back to the pooch, to the pooch and the handle. Well, well, the thing is, is that and either way they love you, right? Well, yeah, they do, but I don't love these handles. Oh. But, and and, and <laughs> but that's not a them. That's just you. And that's okay. Okay. But it's okay. not a them. It's not a them. <laughs> Thank you. God, you don't give me either. Joke. Just kidding. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Well, the thing is, uh, uh, well, I'll put it like this. Uh, one of the things is, is that it's never out there because it's always, you know, the responsibility that we're doing. So, yeah. hey, if you're the only one who don't like your love handle, it's not for everybody to get that. Everybody gets you doesn't don't like your love handle. It's just that they all know that it's up to you to do something about it. Mm. Put that in my face then. Okay. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, let me blame you because I'm upset. Let me blame you because I'm upset with myself, and and and, and you don't get it, right? <laughs> Wash, rinse, repeat. Repeat. We better let Empress Nakia also um, grab a hold of her segment. <laughs> you know, I, I, Ronnie, I knew you you couldn't pass the test, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> your that was too easy. Your, your, Allow me to please be responsible this time for our guests and our guest time. Bafasi, I do apologize that we are running over our committed okay. time. It's okay? Okay, thank yeah. you. Please hang in there with us. All right, thank you so much. Of course. Okay, now is everyone complete talking? Because I thought I was talking. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to get to Ms. Vasavi right now If y'all don't mind So <clears throat> Vasavi And I love y'all just the way y'all are And it's perfect and nothing to fix okay? Vasavi mm-hmm. your issue was The category in the area was money You have a fear That if you Receive The amount of money And, and it, it's about keeping money Not getting it keeping money and having uh, the amount of money that you've had in the past and being responsible for it that you and not blowing through it and today having as you said nothing to show for it but rebuilding and taking yourself out <laughs> <laughs> May I offer a little bit? <laughs> of course, Ronnie. Thank you, my dear. <laughs> Mr. Sabi. Uh and, and the thing is, is that if we had a production assistant, they'd be whispering in your your ear that you get. But it's, uh, the complaint is, I can't ever have what I want again. You can never have what you want again. Yeah, because but, it's like I'll lose it again. I'll lose it. Yeah, yeah, well, and that leaves you frustrated. You can never have what you want again. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Disappointed, you know, uh, yeah. almost I'm like you're. Annoyed. I feel powerless, to be honest. I hate that feeling. But I think I just realized that as we were all talking, I think I kind of figured out what I need to do. I just realized the shift in thinking. <laughs> wow. So it's not that I didn't know what to do it's that i allow drugs and alcohol to take that away from me i didn't lose anything i gave it away i traded it in for my addiction Mm. that's what it was i didn't lose anything i paid my bills on time i had thirty thousand in my savings i was really really good and i blew through everything because i was taking care of a boyfriend that sucked i had a drug and alcohol problem and that's what happened it's not that i just lost it i traded it in for my addiction and as long as i stay on my path keep going go ahead as long as i stay on this path of sobriety i'll get it back again so it wasn't I, I, as i was really thinking about it i was like i didn't really lose anything i traded it in for another for something else that destroyed my life so it's not like oh if i make a lot of money i'll lose it like no if i make a lot of money and then acquire a cocaine habit then yes i will lose it mm. like that's that's what happened that's the reality and i think my ego wants to tell me that it's all my fault and i suck and i should never be successful again but that's not really what it is it's no you had it and you made some pretty bad choices in your life and you had a problem that you needed to 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 get clean with first but so i didn't mm. realize that I kind of feel good now. <laughs> yeah. awesome. So now yeah. what do you think possible for yourself as a result of what you've just newly discovered? And thank you, Ronnie. I don't know where you are. I see you, but, you know, sometimes you disappear. <laughs> oh, wait, I, I'm sorry. What's the question that you just asked? What What is the, the possible for yourself as a result you newly discovered? You newly discovered. Well, it definitely – it definitely solidifies my path of sobriety even more. Like, heck no, I never want to go back to that life. And number two, it's, it's literally, it, it forces me to stay present one day at a time. 
You know, I didn't build what I built financially overnight. It took time, and it took a, uh, and it took time for me to destroy that too. Mm. Because addiction is a progressive disease. You don't just lose everything in one shot, right? It takes time to destroy too. It takes yeah. time to build, and it takes time to destroy, and that's what I did. So now, I need to rebuild one day at a time, and not look so far ahead. You know, and wow. live it here. Yeah. Thank you. And let me thank Diva Nikki and Mr. Ronnie for sharing in the exercise. Thank you, Vasavi, for sharing and doing the work because it Mm -hmm. all makes a difference for each of us um, in in this conversation, and it makes a difference for our listeners because they can really be present and, 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 and go through the rigor with us. So a special thanks to you, Vasavi for being so generous and playing with us during this exercise. Yeah. We like to play. We get a lot of business taken care of. We get a lot of work. We do a lot of hard work. Yeah. So we like to play in the process. So this exercise is not about fixing anything or anyone, okay? We like to be clear with that. This exercise is not about fixing anything. It is about providing an access to power that you can create. So, Diva Nikki, would you please, love, take us to our next break, our final break? Coming up in the next segment is the finale. The Vasavi's final interview and future wealth. Please stay tuned. Thank you, thank you. We give it all to you on Grow Your Mind and Money, and we do it all with love. Over to Prosperous Diva Nikki for the finale. Thank you, thank you, and Vasavi, thank you for sharing. And I have a few more questions, so let's go. You ready? Yep, I'm ready. All right. What challenges do you see lurking in the water that will try to slow you down or take you off the path from having your business succeed beyond expectations? I think looking too far ahead, like planning ahead is great, but losing sight of the present is something that I continuously work on every day. So staying very, very present and taking it one day at a time and, you know, just surrendering to whatever is meant to be, whatever is meant for me, I will get. It's fine. Like I don't Mm. need to fear that I am, that I'm going to be missing anything, that I am lacking anything, because my life is a testament to the fact that I'm, I've come this far and I've overcome a lot, so I'm good. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm just happy to be alive and be happy to be here. And just even being grateful for those little things, I think as long as I stay grateful and one day at a time, I'm good, I'm taken care of, not worried. Awesome, thank you. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Please share two pitfalls you have seen people fall into when it comes to being consistent in their actions for having their dreams and desires manifested. Well, you're saying two pitfalls? Like what, what don't people do? Mm-hmm. That, you, that uh, you have seen. Lack of consistency. Um, getting oh. sidetracked by, by shiny things. Ooh, um, the next shiny thing. Yeah, getting distracted by shiny things, not being focused, and... Um, I think talking too much, definitely, like, talk less and do your work and just keep your head down and do your work, you know, like, you don't need to announce it to the world all the time. And you you end up inflating your ego more than it needs to be, rather than just doing mm-hmm. the thing that you need to do. So we let our ego get in the way, and it shows up in all Got sorts it. of ways. Got it. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Would you please share with us one practice? you use daily to keep yourself in action and focus on the results you intend to produce? Mm, I would say really 
being the type of, like, not just, okay, so you see a lot of stuff on the internet, like, do this, be this, blah, blah, blah. You don't see a lot of people embodying what they're selling. You don't see a lot of people embodying what they're preaching or promising. And my, my number one goal is to embody everything. Embody first. Embody the life that I want. Embody the, the, the happiness that I want. Embody the peace that I want. And everything else is secondary. Because without embodiment, you're just a talking head at that point. So all the actions that I take are leading up to embodiment and really truly embodying um, everything that I that I want in my life from the inside out. Mm, okay, got it. Mhm. Would you please share with us one practice you use daily? No, nope, I'm sorry. I'm repeating myself. Please mm-hmm. forgive me. What do you have on your plate? And how can what our are, listeners uh, learn more about your services and your projects? What do I have on my plate? Okay, well, they, they can learn more about me by going to Um okay. What I have on my plate, I do a lot of writing, content writing for people who I find mm-hmm. it very hard for people to write about themselves. So I'm very good at bringing out people's best attributes and strengths. I use a strength-based writing approach when I write their website, emails, uh, resume, cover letters, you name it, I can write it. So I do that. I also do therapy and coaching also for um, people who are already doing the internal work, but they just kind of want, they need someone on call. They don't want to sit down for the 60-minute therapy session. They don't want to get on the phone for 45 to 90 minutes talking to someone. They just want to do, they're doing the work every day, and they just need a check-in every day or every few days. So that's what I'm doing. And they can learn more about SaviKumar.com. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Team, is there anything that you would like to share or acknowledge from the interview? Mr. Ronnie? Well, one thing, um, <laughs> one, one thing is I definitely have to acknowledge you for your authenticity and straight talk. And, yeah, just thank you for that. It's like a breath of fresh air. And, You know, one of the things that we say or or a statement that we say is that Vasavi's willingness to share her heart, not just her knowledge, Mm -hmm. is what makes the difference and has her be a champion for humanity. See, and I have nothing against, you know, shows and people that, you know, want to really share their knowledge and share their experience and, and, and make a difference that way, you know. That you know, love them. God bless them. What makes our show unique is is that we don't share any wisdom. We don't particularly share any knowledge, but we do share our authentic selves. And and in that, and in that, a difference is made. You know, you came on, you played with us, you did the exercise, and you got value. Well, someone else got value from that exercise. And Prosperous Viva Nikki, you know, all of us love people who love you that don't get it. <laughs> you got some friends who are listening who go, girl, I'm with you. <laughs> they don't get me. <laughs> they don't get me. <laughs> and you know what? And And you know what? And they don't have to. And I love them, and they love me. <laughs> right. So uh, you know, uh, so so just just thank you for the for the authenticity, and, and that's part of what just makes Roll Your Mind and Money. You know, you know, it's such such a great experience. So thank you, thank you, thank you. You're welcome. Oh, complete. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> Bonnie Empress Nakia. What would you like to acknowledge or share from the interview? Well, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, I I want to really one. I want to share how the this entire conversation from the beginning until now has really got me present to a new relationship that I have for the word love, and love encompasses everything. How I relate to other people, um, the acceptance of others. Allowing people to be exactly who they are and be free to be who they are. 
And me having the choice to love them completely and entirely as a whole human being as they are, and at the same time loving myself and seeing where I am today compared to where I was yesterday and years ago and even a moment ago during the course of this conversation, my ability to grow and presence myself to a new human being that I am. Um, in listening to you, Vavasi, I really appreciate you being our guest on this show. You know, there's there's so many guests that we've had in the past and, you know, moments where we're like, ooh. <laughs> well, I'm like, ooh. <laughs> oh, Lord. And, and it is so refreshing. And and Ronnie B said uh, a lot of everything. <laughs> Excuse me. Sorry. No, sorry. Excuse me. A lot of everything that I was present to, and you you have this this um, this gracious way of being, um, this generous generous way of being, and being so transparent and authentic. And we've talked before. And there's a consistency with who you are. And you spoke of being consistent. There is a consistency with who you are and who you have been for me and in my observations of you over time and engagement with you over time and, 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 and you know, going through your experiences. And I thank you so much for allowing the relationships to be developed and created as they are to where there is value brought forth in every conversation because there's always new things that one can I can present myself to, new things that I can hear that may have been the same thing that I've heard before, but I can I can hear it differently and get something different out of it that makes a difference for what I'm up to and where I'm standing in this space, in this world. So thank you so very much, you, Diva Nikki, for your transparency, for who you have been being, um, for the listeners and for myself, and Ronnie B, for your contribution always, for making a difference and in, in, in keeping us with the rigor and, and making sure that nothing is put out there and that it shouldn't be, and being interruption and making a difference with that interruption and it is so powerful and I thank you and I get that. Thank you, Nikki. That's what's present for me. Oh wow. Nikia, thank you. Well, what I want to first acknowledge from the interview is along with what Ronnie B said, your authenticity. But moreover, your raw, your bold, your fearless authenticity. I appreciate it over here with us because in the networks that you have built and established over time, while you have created your success story, right? This is your authenticity could have been shared and the rawness that it was. It could have been shared anywhere, but you allowed us in that very powerful and that very vulnerable space and to make a difference with our listeners. And that's the impact of the world. So I want to thank you and acknowledge that. And creating and for creating the space to allow me to be that same way. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. And what I want to share is this is everything. What is for you is for you. What is for us is for us. And if the everything that was shared at, during this interview is what it was supposed to be, is what is meant and it's too much to do a recap and a share. This is the kind of stuff that you get to marinate on and go back and revisit, and you get to continue to eat off of. You know, like that big turkey leg, 
you get to go back and pick off of it and just pick off of it. So this is one of those kind of interviews, and I just want to thank you for being a contribution in that way. And with that being said, Vopacy, please stay for the rest of the show. Thank you for your sharing and being on Grow Your Mind and Money. It has been wonderful. Empress of Faith, over to you for future wealth. Thank you. Okay. So we experience the current world and future from conversations we choose to generate for having the future and the current world we desire, experience, express, and producing results in our lives. We have a little exercise intended to empower you in clearing this so you can be present to your current world and future. Pen and papers. Yeah. Now, create the following categories, romance, sex, S-C-S, oh, my bad, sex, uh, money, and health. I know y'all got that. So romance, the second word, y'all heard me twice, money and health, got it. Under each category, answer this question, where or with whom do I lack freedom or the future just sucks? Next, answer these questions. How long have I lacked freedom or the future sucks in this area or with this person or group of people? Am I willing to have a breakthrough in this area or with this person or group of people? Now, be honest. It is not good or bad if you're not willing to have a breakthrough. It is simply what so. If you are willing to have a breakthrough in this area or with this person or group, are you willing to have that will allow you to be vulnerable so others can see your strength? Now, the access to power is communication. Your ability to be vulnerable is the key to your breakthrough. Keep working on this exercise during the week. If you have any questions or need coaching, email us at divas at prosperousdivas.com. A world of peace and prosperity, one listener at a time. Until next time, grow your mind and money. Yeah, it's a good thing. Peace, love, and blessings. Till next time, we're out. 